Bueno, nerds, bienvenidos de vuelta a la última parte del track de seguridad. Y estoy acá con Bruce Shayer, que nos acaba de hablar un poco acerca de AI hackers. Así que vuelvo a switchear al idioma inglés ahora. Hi, Bruce, how are you? And thank you for joining. Ah, uh, thanks for having me. Now you're having me live, not just recorded. <laughs> right, yes, we are live uh, from Buenos Aires City. So uh, let, me, let me start with some... Uh, early questions that I'm getting from the audience. Um, if you could uh, define, I mean, in your words, what is a hacker? So a hacker is, so I think so hacking is a technical ability. So this is not a moral definition. This is not a criminal. This is not a subversive. Uh, a hacker is someone who hacks. And I'm defining hacking as taking a system of rules and finding ways to subvert them. Cool. I'm going to I'm going to put that in in a t-shirt. Uh I love that definition. <laughs> I'm I'm good at t-shirt level answers. <laughs> love it. Awesome. So, But you uh, have to send me a you have to send me one. I take a size small. Okay. Okay. We'll we'll make sure to uh for you to get one of one of the Nerdella t-shirts. Um all right. So, another question um that I'm getting here from the audience is What do you think, I mean, in your opinion, what are the most relevant threats in the in the past years? Uh and, you know, and how we can prepare for them. So I assume we're talking about computer threats. Yes. So I think we're learning a lot. Uh, we're learning a lot uh, in the Ukraine about uh, cyber threats in wartime and how they're not as impressive as we thought. We're seeing a lot of threats, you know, in peacetime, uh, ransomware, denial of service, just ways that criminals are hacking systems to uh, for profit, either by holding data hostage or by blocking access to systems. Mm -hmm. Those seem to be major threats today. I write a lot about threats of uh, physical systems. The fact that computers are coming into cars and refrigerators and thermostats bring a, bring a real world threat in a way a spreadsheet doesn't. And so those are the things to kind of look at. All right. Right, cool, interesting. Um, and how do you? Another question is: uh, How do you think um, the attacks to cognitive systems might evolve in the? To, to what kind of systems? Uh, cognitive systems. I'm. I'm. I'm trying cognitive to, systems. Yeah. All right. So this is interesting, right? Yeah. Uh, and I think hacking cognitive systems is not just a computer thing. You know, the but ways of uh, propaganda is a cognitive hack and appeals to authority and uh, appeals to patriotism. And you know, there's many ways that we sort of take advantage of our, our cognitive systems to influence each other. And, and the difference is that computers, AI in particular, can do that at scale. So the techniques aren't changing. What's changing is the scale. Right? Right. I can create an advertisement that is focused on what you in particular are vulnerable to. And I can do that a million different times right. talking to a million different people in a way you couldn't with broadcast television. You got to pick one ad that works on most people. So it is the scaling and the personalization that take the cognitive hacks of centuries, thousands of years ago and make them replicable at a speed, scale, and scope we're not used to. So that's the way to think of that. I mean, nothing is new. Right. It's just that it's happening more efficiently, faster, more personalized. Yes, Bruce. The, I'm sorry. I'm, I was like in awe listening to you. All right. And here I have a question from Pablo um, that says, uh, Bruce, thanks for the talk. Do you think AI, ML, or AL uh, slash ML will eventually be capable of explain why a threat is a threat as a human security analyst? So this is interesting, right? So uh, explanations are weird. Explanations are fundamentally a human cognitive shortcut, right? It's a way that we transmit justifications to each other, right? I can explain to you why I reach a conclusion and maybe you'll agree with me. Explanations are not the way computers make decisions. They're not suited for computers. Computers don't naturally produce them, at least not human understandable ones. Right. Uh, 
your question is really, can a computer produce an explanation dumbed down for a human? Right. And the answer is probably, eventually, I mean, the question said ever, that's a long time. So, so I can <laughs> give me an out and just say yes. But that's what you have to think about there. Right. That explanations are a human shortcut. Mm. And it's sort of interesting to watch computers be forced to make computer level decisions, but also provide human level explanations. And I'm not sure that's always possible. There might not be a simplification suitable for humans right. that the computer can produce because there might not be one. Right. You're right. Um, and one last question, maybe we can squeeze it in. Uh, Leandro says, from your point of view, are there big tech comp are, are big tech companies going to take the AI control in their hands as they did in the past with the privacy in the internet? Of course, right? I mean, the money and power is going to use this for themselves. It, it, it's ridiculous to assume otherwise. You know, we live in a capitalist system. We live in a market economy. And these things will be used by the rich and powerful to benefit themselves against you. That's the way the system works. Of course, it's going to be Facebook and Google and Apple and Amazon that are going to use these systems. They're not going to use it for our interest. Right. Okay. Okay. Very, uh, very interesting. And for sure, something that I will keep on thinking about today, Bruce. <laughs> as my I wish favorite. I was in Buenos Aires with you. I miss that city. When are you coming to Argentina? Oh, no time soon, but I will. I remember like, you know, dinner at 10 o'clock. I know you people, you're weird, but I like it. <laughs> We're weird. We know that. Um, awesome. So that's about time that we have today for questions to you. Uh, there were a lot of other questions uh, here on the list, uh, but unfortunately we're up to time. Uh, Bruce, I want to thank you in name of Nerdiala for coming uh, here and giving the talk uh, to our audience. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to add? Next time in person. For sure. I'll, I'll take your word for that. Uh, and hopefully we'll meet in person. Thank you so much, Bruce. Um, bien, bueno, y para los que me están siguiendo desde acá, Argentina, eh, nos vamos a una brevísima pausa y volvemos enseguida. Vamos a nerdear. 